Man, when we first, when we first started going out so much, so much. Like, as time went on, you we like, had the truth. We had like, we had like, 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 well, no, he's doing just, he probably, yeah, he probably gone, it's not completely. Yeah, you don't think you, you're on your public? Because I can't get you. You can't get me? Yes, I did have, not public, but I did. Uh, turn it off? No, wait, wait here. Wait. Just, okay, you're on. Just sit live there. At that time, we were not. Where is the law? Everybody talking. Hmm? Yeah. We were on there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Get some lighting down in my face. Ah, we're happy and grateful to be here today. Anybody else came on yet? sing a Christmas song. <laughs> if we can't sing, just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, raise a song. Raise a song, Sister Zita. <laughs> Christmas song. Praise the Lord. This Joy thing. to the world, the Lord has come. Just keep, keep on jumping. I can sing, y'all. Yeah. Let us be singing. 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 Let us be You have a daughter to sing today. <laughs> Good singer, praise the Lord. The first know well, amen. God with us. We shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us, and we're going to be talking about him today. Hello, Chili. Hello, Terry. Hello, Chris. God bless you all. Thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas Sunday. Amen. But as I said to everybody before, we're not traditional. We just go as the Spirit of God leads us. Amen. So this time we're going to call my wife to come and to do her thing. <laughs> this is, how is it looking on, on your, your screen? Because this is jumping. Do I had to get, I can't get off now okay. because people is on already. It's good. It's good, okay. All right. It's so gonna. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas, everyone. Excuse my singing over there. I, I, my, my noise is not as joyful as my husband's. <laughs> but I try. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't. Just, but we give praise to God. We are grateful and thankful to be here to present the good news. I would like to read... Um, a writing from Ty Cobb this morning and also from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 through 7. I think I'll read the writing first. It says, you can argue about what religion is best. You can shout the pros and cons. You can champion this denomination or that. But Jesus came to do away with religion forever. 
Religion is man's attempt to reach God. Amen. By building a tower to heaven, mm -hmm. working, performing, oh, obeying yeah. the rules, conforming to the group, but God came down to earth and became a man and remove everything that separated us from him through the cross. He now invites the world into his arms of love. He desires relationship, not religion. Dependence, not dogma. Trust, not trying. So you can argue religion till you blew in the face. And when you argue when you are all argued out and grasping out of breath, he'll pick you up and love you. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, and I'm going to read in the TSB, mm -hmm. um, the Passion, it's not the TSB, the Passion Translation. Isaiah 9. It reads, no more gloom for those who are in distress. Although the Lord greatly humbled in the regions of Zebulon and Naphtali, he will one day bestow upon them great honor from the Mediterranean eastward to the other side of the Jordan and throughout the Galilee of the Gentiles. Those who walk in darkness have seen a radiant light shining upon them they once lived in the shadow of death, but now a glorious light has dawned. Lord, you have multiplied the nations and given them overwhelming joy. They are ecstatic in your presence and rejoice like those who bring in a great harvest and those who divide upon the spoils of victory. For you have broken the chains that have bound your people and lifted off the heavy bars across their shoulders. The rod of the oppressor used against them, you have shattered all their bondage, just as you did with Midian armies were defeated. Every boot of marching troops, every uniform caked and with blood will be burned as food for the fire. And a child has been born for us. Hallelujah. A son has been given to yes. us. The responsibility of com complete dominion will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be the Wonderful One, um, the Extraordinary God. Strategist, Hallelujah. the Mighty God, Thank you, Jesus. the Father of Eternity, Hallelujah. the Prince of Peace. Yes. Great and vast is his dominion. Hallelujah. He will bring immeasurable peace and prosperity. Mm. He will rule on David's throne yes. and over David's kingdom mm. to establish and uphold it by promoting justice and righteousness. Mm. From this time forth and forevermore, the marvelous passions that the Lord Yahweh, commander of angel armies, has for his people mm. will ensure that it is finished. And yes, it is finished, because he did complete work mm -hmm. in and through us. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. God mm -hmm. bless you. Yeah. Pastor, would you come and greet us? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, Wonderful. Powerful. Hallelujah. Good morning, world. Good morning. Where's, uh, where's your brother Kenneth at, man? No. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth must have, must have slept in this morning. Yeah. Yeah, Might have got Conway Kenneth up, man. Hope he's all right. <laughs> good morning, everybody out there this morning. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. We're, we're grateful for Jesus Christ and his life and his birth. and uh, <clears throat> Just to have access to the Father, to the throne, through Jesus Christ and his life and what he did for us on the cross, uh, providing access for us to enter into the, th before the throne of grace and mercy, to access the Father. So we are grateful this morning for that, man. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a joy. It's a joy to be in this life of grace and to be able to grow in the grace, and step by step to be able to evolve in the grace and as his power by his Holy Spirit through grace. And see, grace is just more than just being forgiven for your sins. Grace is the life of Christ and the very nature and power of God at work in one's life. So people, it's important to understand and embrace and allow the Holy Spirit 
to have his way in your life through the resurrection power that, that was provided because Jesus came and lived and he died for us. So we're grateful this morning for his life and for his birth. And we're grateful. And I'm grateful for all you out there that tune in to, to listen to my brother or sister daily and, and whatever, every other day or every several days or whatever you, you tune in to my family here. And I'm, I'm grateful for that and keep supporting them, keep listening to them. And um, it's truth. And um, God bless you all and your families during this Christmas season. Um, don't get too caught up in the, the earthly aspect of it, but <laughs> understand the, 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 the meaning of it, the nature of, of Christmas and the birth of Christ. And, and, and embrace that and celebrate that in your lives and your families and pass it down to your children as well and to teach them that it's more than just gifts it is you know it's alright to get gifts but that's, that's fine to, you know for the kids the kids love gifts and they love to have fun that's fine but also teach them the meaning of Christmas and, and who Christ right. is and, and, and train right. them up in the things of the things of God and Christ and have a blessed day in the name of Jesus Christ praise God amen God bless you mm-hmm. thank you absolutely thank you mm-hmm. yeah, keep it keep Teach your children. Teach That's your right. children. Praise mm-hmm. the Lord. That's right. <laughs> a lot of kids don't understand what is Christmas, what the meaning of Christmas. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, yeah. not only kids. Yeah, <laughs> right. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people don't understand what it is mm-hmm. where Jesus came. May God, thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for... Thank you, Sister Davis, for being here today. Thank you, Lee, for being here. We thank God for we are here today to celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're not traditional uh, ministry. You know? So we, we just go with the flow as, as the Lord lead us. Never knew my wife going to read that scripture. <laughs> Never knew that. But um, I like, I love that scripture. That for This was said... The book of Isaiah that was in the Old Testament under the Old Testament he was prophesied about him coming we dealt we dealt with it a couple of days ago and um, um, about the prophecy and the fulfillment of Jesus that Jesus came he's not up for grab people think that Jesus Jesus is just just a password no he's not for Isaiah in nine for unto us a child is born that will be born. <laughs> in those days, mm-hmm. you know, he wasn't born yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this, and this, that's a reason from the King James. My wife read from a different version. His son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Glory Counselor, mm-hmm. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace, man. This is the this is one we would talk about every day. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are grateful to be here. We are grateful for all of you that are here in in, in the assembly here today. Amen. All of us, and we thank you, all of us, do, those of you that are on Facebook. Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> I was just talking to a cousin of mine. First time we spoke. All the way from London, England, this morning, and um, I, I invited, but I probably didn't give her the information, but the whole information. I hope she can get on one day. Amen. So people, people are hearing the truth, right? All over the world, all over the world, we are here proclaiming the truth. We are not here talking about religion. And my wife read that uh, that part of from from what's his name, Dan? Ty Card. Ty Card, a guy who understands the message of grace. Amen. My wife loves him. <laughs> I never have time to listen too much too much to different people many different times. But I think I listened to part of some of the things he was saying. Amen. He understands the ministry of grace. There's a lot of people talk grace. Everybody talk grace. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mm-hmm. But do you know the meaning of it? The meaning of what, what you're saying? Amen. That Jesus Christ is grace. <laughs> He's not just part of he, he, You can't separate Christ from grace. He is the grace. <laughs> when you call Christ, you got grace. So if you got Christ and you go back living under the law, there's something wrong. You didn't, that means you didn't have Jesus. Amen. He came to give you freedom. Amen. But the law put you in bondage, and if you got to go, if you come to Christ like the Galatians and you went back under the law, you the, you really don't know what you have, the meaning of it. Amen. I, I I keep on saying that people 
read the scripture friend read the scripture to know the meaning of the scripture <coughs> when you read the scripture you can know what he says but according to could, could, could you read Corinthians for me? First Corinthians 2 9 I should get it. I should. I'm sorry. First Corinthians. Two and nine. I think I have. Okay, I have it. I have it marked out from my Bible here. Okay, it's okay, honey. I got it. Thank you. First Corinthians two and nine. <clears throat> but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And some people read the scripture and they stay right there. They never go far. Keep on reading. You got to keep on reading, man. Keep on reading. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of their heart. So when you read the scripture, friend, when you read the scripture, you have to allow the Spirit of God to teach you the meaning of what you're reading. Because if you just, some, sometimes we just stay halfway. Another scripture people read and say, and, well, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. But they never go forward. They never go forward with that scripture. scripture says, but it's God that walketh in you. God is the one doing the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not you working it out. You read the first part of that scripture, you think that you have to work it out. It's all about you. No, 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 friend. It's all about God that worketh in you. Thank you, Jesus. That's why Jesus Christ came, giving his life for us. That's why he came. He was born in a manger. He was born just, just very ordinary, ordinary. Amen. He didn't come like a king. They thought he was a king. You know, they thought he was that what Israel wanted, a king. But Jesus came very humble. Amen. And that's why he ended up in a manger, died with, with animals, with donkeys. <laughs> and that's the, because there was no room in the inn. Amen. There was no room in the inn. You think that God himself coming to, die, to, to be born... And he would he would go to the best hotel, <laughs> the best hotel. No, but he came in a donkey stable. Hallelujah, purpose. Hallelujah for a purpose. That's the humbleness of Jesus Christ, and that's why you see when you see people out there pre preaching and humble, exalting themselves. I am. I'm. They they all talk about riches. No, no. Remember Jesus died, born. You were born in Amen. <laughs> Remember when one time the story with Jesus, when they, he got lost in the crowd. <laughs> Amen. And when he, Mama found them, Mama was mad. <laughs> that's that's the same thing. If you have a child and you're in the mall with a child, Amen. And the child um get lost. The first thing you want to do when you get a child, you want to strangle him. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he turned back and he said to the Mama. See, I am, I, don't you know, I'm on my father's business. Friend, yes, yes that's, who, that's, who, that's who he, where he came. That's who Jesus is, friend. Jesus Christ, Christ the Bible says, God is, God became man. God became man. And he came in the form of, of Jesus Christ. Amen. He became man. God impregnated Mary, the blessed Virgin Mary. Yes, she's blessed. Amen. But she, she's not the Savior. <laughs> Amen. You, you Catholic over there. <laughs> Think that Mary is the, see, 
No, Mary bring forth Jesus Christ. That's what's her purpose. Amen. That's, that's the, God chose her. She was chosen amongst me, amongst all women, to, to bring forth Jesus. Jesus, you see, Jesus. God had to become man to die for for, for man. So, give, so when he he grew up, and the Bible says the time came. The time came. The Bible said, giving his life for you. Hallelujah. Yes, that's what he did, friend. He gave his life for me. Give his life for you. Amen. That's what he did. Amen. Recognize that, friend. That he gave his life for us. Amen. I personally could tell you about that. Because I experienced the greatest miracle anyone could ever witness. I found the deepest need of my heart, satisfied by the Lord Jesus Christ. God took a man. Amen. There's so many people today that they got that vacuum inside. They got that vacuum inside. And they don't know what it is. Let's turn the power off. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. First knob over there. The first one over there. Just well, power it down. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. Yeah, there is a God-shaped vacuum in every man, every woman. Mm -hmm. That yearning, you yearning, you yearning, you want to be filled. But that vacuum could only be filled by the one who came who was born around this season, Christmas Day. We celebrate his birth. The only one that can fill that vacuum, that empty vacuum. That's why we, because of the vacuum, we, we turn to everything else. The flesh, sex, drugs. Some people go farther, deeper, deeper in drugs. Alcohol. Driving the Uber, I saw this young girl came out to the liquor store, man. This time of the, whatever is going on in, in your life today, because of the pandemic, the shutdown, people are drinking more alcohol instead of turning to Jesus Christ. They think that could fill it up. I want to tell you this morning that the only thing that will fill it, just like he filled me, I experienced the great miracle anyone can. You can experience that miracle today. Allowing Jesus Christ to come into your life. Receiving his life. Not receiving religion as my wife talked about this morning. Receiving the, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he gave his life for you. That's why he came. That's why you were born. That's why you were born. Born. For God desire all men to be reconciled unto himself. There is a there is there was this system before Jesus came. There was this system that that was religious. And man today is still religious there was the religion at the day was to have 
was under a law, the law of Moses. All of them. That's why they, they believe in Moses so much. They still believe in Moses, yes. But Jesus came and took that away. The desire that all men should be reconciled to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world when he went to the cross unto him. The one that could only fill you up. Because so many people's life are so much filled with anxiety, especially what is happening. They get anxious. Although the Lord said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything give thanks. But he takes the Spirit of God in you to teach you the meaning of that. Otherwise, you're going to be anxious. You're going to yield to the flesh. If you are anxious this morning, it's because you are yielding after the flesh. You're listening to the wrong dial. <laughs> Listen to the AM dial. Pastor Silliam talked about it the other day. Yes, you're, you're listening to the wrong dial. Dial. You'll tune in to the wrong dial. Switch it and turn back to the AM dial. FM. FM, sorry. <laughs> the FM is Jesus Christ. He's in you, friend. If you receive him, he's in you. He gave his life for you so that he can live his life in you <laughs> and to you. <laughs> but you must receive him. When you receive him, you get life. Why you need Jesus Christ? Because you are dead in trespasses and in sin. You were born in trespasses and in sin. And, and I wanted to do all the study and go back to the book of Genesis. And, 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 but I don't think the forum for this is we don't have all everything. But you can go back and study for yourself. In the beginning, God, God created heaven and earth, created man. Adam, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, he said, I'm going to give you this garden, Adam. Well, you were talking to Adam, you were talking to Eve. <laughs> he said, I'll give you this garden. You can eat anything that you want. But the, this fruit here, the day you eat it of it, you will die. And the deceiver came and lied to his wife, at Eve. Lied to her. He deceived her. Satan, Satan is a deceiver, friend. Friend, friends, don't listen to the to the AM. <coughs> don't listen to the AM. She took and she she ate and and from that day they died spiritually. God was separated from them. Because that, you and I were born dead. Because of Adam and Eve, nothing to do with Irie and Agatha Regis, that I were born dead. No, nothing to do with that. They are the one that, that, that brought me forth, mom and dad. And I love them dearly. They're all gone. They're all gone. Still remember them. Never will forget them. My dad was a strong guy. But didn't know the Lord, in my, in my opinion. I don't know if at the, at, the, at, at the last moment that he received Jesus. I don't know that. But I know mom received Christ before she died. 
But because of them, I'm here. But I was born spiritually dead because of Adam, my great, 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 great grandfather and mother. And every one of us was born dead spiritually. We were born without the life of Christ separated from God. And that's why Jesus came <laughs> to give us what? Life. John 10, 10 said that. See, I am come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life could only be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not just a preaching, a, a, a saying. It is a reality. As I said before, I experienced the greatest miracle one Do you remember how bad And I remember have, having a gun that have a, it's like a, a cock. When you put a cock in it and you have sulfur in it, when you hit it, it's not, it wasn't a real gun, you couldn't kill anybody. But when you fire it, the <laughs> fire came out and you make, make the noise like a, like a gun. And I took that gun and I said, man, and I, and I took my machete and I went up there. And they all scattered. So that's how bad I was. I was evil, friend. But the day came when I received that, that Jesus Christ, the one that we're celebrating at this time of the season, I received him and I experienced it. So that's why I can talk about it. There's a lot of people, and as I said this morning, when you teach, if you teach, you get to teach your children. And some people cannot teach their children because they don't know for themselves. But if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior this morning, please teach your children at this time, this, uh, this Christmas week that we, we are celebrating, teach them the meaning of Christmas. And they're not too young to accept Christ. It's better when they accept Christ young. Let them get out there first. You teach them, and if you didn't teach them, my wife always said, if you didn't teach them, somebody else going to teach them something else, even in the school. For God was not pleased to have all his fullness dwelt in him. And through him he reconciled to himself all things. Whether things on earth and things in heaven. By making peace through his blood. Shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God. Yes, because of Adam and Eve. And were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Yes, you're not talking about me. <laughs> but no, he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body to death, to the presence, to present you holy in his sight. We thought blemish, 
and free from accusation. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, glory. That's what I could say this morning that I can sing, but I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I can shout hallelujah. Amen. Because he, I'm standing here not, not condemned. I'm standing free of accusation because of Jesus Christ, not because of me, of what I do. You'll never hear me telling you that I did this and I did that. No, Jesus did it. I allow him to do it. And that's why I'm encouraging you this morning. God desire for you this morning and for all men that listen to me this morning, amen, to be reconciled. Amen. Proceeded his provision. He provided it at the cross, man. <laughs> <laughs> he provided at the cross that's why he came that's why he was born and he grew up and that's why he gave his life the desire for you desire for all of us to be reconciled he made that provision glory to God he provided a way out there was no way out. Man had to kill that bull and goat every every year. They call it young keeper. Young keeper, they will come in and offer sacrifice for their sin. And when they turn turn around and walk down the aisle, they just offer sacrifice up here in the altar, and and and, and, and they, they walk down the aisle. And men, though this beautiful woman is standing there. And right there, you start lusting. Right away, you got to wait another year to come back. Because that's... The Bible says, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust at her, you commit adultery already. So right there, right there, right there, right in the very temple, they committed sin. Again. So they had to come back another year, or wait another year. And if they die before that, what happened? <laughs> the Bible didn't say, but the beef. What they happened, I know they, they went to hell. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise God. So the provision was made at the cross. He reconciled us to himself and not counting our sins against us. Amen. I said the other night, um, some people probably didn't understand what I was saying. When you were born, the day you were born, you were, you were forgiven. You were born, who you, you only, you have, uh, you have little babies here this month? Hmm? Grandchildren? Yeah. Grandchildren, yeah. They are forgiven right now. They are forgiven already at the, at the, at the birth when they were born. But they are not saved. They got, to they got to receive. They have to grow up and receive. That's why we got to tell them. We got to preach and teach them. Not just preach, but teach them. They will listen to us. First of all, you don't, don't let them get out there for, the, for these lost people, for these demonic people to teach them. They are demonic. You got to teach them now. If you never receive what Christ, the provision that he made for you, this morning you're still, you're physically alive, but you're spiritually dead. I call it walking dead. I was a walking dead until I experienced that greatest miracle 
that every, every, anyone could ever witness. I was dead, friend, spiritually. Amen. I was lost. I had religion too. I believe in Jesus too. Yes, all my life I believe in Jesus. I was raised in the in the church believing in Jesus. But I was lost. I was dead. <laughs> There's so many people today, so many people today that are in religion, believe in Jesus, but they never receive. When you believe, you're going to receive. They believe, when you believe, say, come unto me, I, I will give you rest. You got to receive the person of Jesus Christ. Because God, God, greater is love than no one than this, than a man laid on his life for his friends. He called you a friend this morning. That's John 15, 13. But God, John, Romans 5 and 8 says, but God demonstrate his own love for us. For you and me, friend, everyone. Jew and Gentiles. People come up and they think that oh, because I'm a Jew, I'm, I'm, I'm special. No. no, you are still lost. Mm -hmm. You're still walking dead if you never receive Jesus. So those of us that receive Christ, whether you're Jew or you're Gentile, we are one in Christ. We are born again. That's the word. Born again. We are born again. Amen. Because he demonstrated his love that while we were sinners, sinners mean they lost. <laughs> that's, that's the key. People don't know the meaning, friend. The meaning of being a sinner is being lost. Yes. Separated from God. And that's why he reconciled you. And he asked you to believe him. Receive him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Under the log, forgiveness was confidential. Credential. Sorry. Credential. 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 Conditional, yes, based on what you do. Today, you are under grace because of Jesus Christ. You are forgiven. Amen. Under grace, forgiveness is final based upon what He did. He did it all. He did it all. So there is no. There's no way to go back and keep on working yourself up because as a child of God, the reason the child of God sinned now is because he did rather never understand his salvation, never understand who he is in Christ. And this is why he still go like the Galatians. They went right back under the law. They start, start doing things, you know, walking after the flesh. Paul said that. If you walk after the flesh, you will fulfill the desires of it. You know why? Why? Because the flesh you will always have with you. If you don't have the flesh, that means you're dead. <laughs> Physically. <laughs> so the flesh will always be with you. That, but that man, that will always be with you. But you don't have to feed to the flesh. You have to walk after the spirit. Allow the spirit of God to control you. Quite frankly, it is a line that split right down to the middle of humanity. As we weather, we are going to listen to truth that comes from Jesus, or whether we are going to listen to error that comes from the world. The world this morning have nothing but error. Truth comes from Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I give you truth this morning is what you're going to do with it, friend. Amen? There's many people this morning hear truth and they say, oh no, this is just another message. This is not just another message, friend. This is a message for you to make the decision this morning if you, if you, if you have that, that yearning, 
that vacuum. You could know that. I don't know. I knew that I had a vacuum. I didn't know I could fill it up. That's why I try everything else. But the time I came to and I received Jesus Christ on the sidewalk, place named St. Jewel Street, right on the corner of Maloney Street, I think, Maloney, so long, 47 years ago. Yeah, I think Maloney is the one that go across. <laughs> My buddy was living right on the, the corner there. He was a tailor, good friend of mine, in person. Amen. That's when Jesus change your life, my life. And many, many years after that, I, I didn't recognize it. I know I have Christ. I know I received Christ. I know I was saved. I knew that. But still, there was a struggle because I was like a Galatian. Saturday is the Sabbath day. morning have the opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior. I'm preaching this morning, I'm teaching, talking to, to somebody this morning that are lost, that are lost and struggling. You are struggling to make it in. You are in religion too. Yeah, you, you, go, you go to church probably every day. <laughs> you pray every day. <laughs> I got some friends, man, they pray every morning, every morning. Even on Sunday morning. They pray, but still, still don't understand their true identity in Christ. Yeah, yeah, you pray, you pray. Nothing wrong in praying, yeah, you pray. When you pray, friend, you pray, talking, prayers is like talking, speaking to your what? Your best friend. And who's your best friend? Jesus Christ. So it's not about prayer, faith. Faith come by hearing and not by praying. Okay. Or is it the window? He is jumping. I see. Yeah, yeah. So that video probably wouldn't be good this morning, but it's okay. It's all good. Somebody probably somebody yeah, heard heard the word. Huh? Yeah, somebody heard the word. Glory to God. Yeah, that's why I should stop it and go back. Because it's still big. So we thank God for every one of you this morning. Thank God for Ray. Ray is here from Texas. My niece, God bless you. Say hi to my nephew for me. I know he's busy right now. Amen. We'll be praying for the people for in the military. Amen. The military is going to get busy soon. <laughs> Amen. They are busy right now, but they will get busy. Praise the Lord. We're praying for the police officers. We're praying for the, the protection. Of, of this great country of ours. We're praying for those in authority. Amen. The Bible says that. So pray for those in authority that we may lead a peaceful life. Amen. When, friend, when you hear me say that, is he's, 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 he's a politician. I'm not a politician. I would never be a politician. Politicians are crooks. Most of them are. <laughs> I don't want to be a crook. I want to be a minister of the gospel. Minister, whenever I talk, I speak truth to you. Truth. Amen. Somebody told me the other day because I was talking to, to her husband, and she said, Brother Regis, you're lying. I said, man, you, you just accused me for lying. But I have, I have facts to back it up. Whenever I speak, I speak because of her facts. Amen. What I talk about this morning, that's why I came out and told you, God took a, a, a man with with a with a 
what was it? What was it? What was it saying again? I did write it now. Um, he give me, give me, take, give, fill me with, with, with his with himself. Amen. But, but so whenever I speak, I speak truth to you. The truth I'm saying to you this morning is that Jesus Christ is the only way. This is the truth that will set you free. Not no other way, friend. Not a religion this morning. No, 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 no. Forget religion, man. Forget religion. Man, all this thing. You know what religion is? It's all man-made. All this stuff, the singing and the robes and the the color and the everything, all of this man-made stuff. Think that have anything to do with it, with your salvation? Salvation is Christ in you. Christ will come and live in you and give you peace. That's that's the that's the, the message, not religion. So we thank God for you and you and you and all of you that are here. I can't see the rest of folk, but I remember seeing Dorothy is here. God bless you. All the way from where are you from again? Is Dorothy? Yes. Minnesota. From Minnesota. Ray from Texas. Chili from New York. Chris is still working there. We praise God for him. We thank God for him and him and his crew praying for the blessing, the protection upon him. And we're praying for the protection of Terry's son, who is a police officer. We pray for him today. I think it's Eric, right? We pray for Eric, Terry. God, God keep him by his mighty power as he go out and, and, and help people. Amen. Their life is at stake. But we thank God for him. Donald Trump, we pray for I'm praying to, to, to the Lord this morning for my cousin that I spoke to all the way from London this morning. Oh man, I forget her name now. I know her last name is John. I could remember John. <laughs> but, um, we're praying for her this morning. Starting, uh, starting A. But um, amen. We thank God for all of you. And we thank God for all of us here this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank God for having his way today. And we're asking God to allow you today to have a Merry Christmas. Amen. Not a, I don't say to people, Happy Holiday. I say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> because Christ is Christ. Christmas is Christ. Amen. So it's Merry Christmas to all of you today. Merry Christmas to you, Dorothy. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We love you and we see you tomorrow evening. 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. I hope that I shared something this morning that you heard that helped you to end up to growing in grace. Amen. And if you, this morning that you are lost and you have that vacuum seeking, that you can come to the only one that can fill that vacuum. The name is Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye.